Uh, Andrew, I'll let you kind of tell us about this. So what I want to talk about is a way to um, streamline my job as well as my deputy fire marshal's job. Uh, when we go into an establishment that has uh, fire alarm system, sprinkler system, hood ansel system, any system that gets tested on a regular basis, we'll have to ask for the records and sometimes businesses or the property owners don't have the records on file. There's a company out there that I have found called the Compliance Engine, which is a third party company with a cloud-based service that when passing a resolution in the town would require all the reports that would typically go to the business owners and myself for review would be uploaded to the compliance engine. Everything would be in one spot. I can log into the computer, view, say Burger King, I can see when the last time their system was inspected. I have everything on file. It is no cost to the town to use this service. The contractors that do the system testing pay a nominal upload fee to upload the report, which in turn um, will get them more business because the compliance engine will send reminders to businesses that they're due for their annual inspection. Their They'll send a reminder if there was a deficiency to get the deficiency corrected within so many days. And they will also notify me if the deficiencies aren't taken care of within a certain amount of time so that way I can enforce the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code. So there was two options for utilizing the compliance engine. There would be a resolution passed to amend Chapter 124 of the Town Code, which is the Fire Prevention Code. And I put a notice out to the uh, board members of w about what it would say. And we can also do a revenue share with the compliance engine. So there could be a $10 fee on top of the upload fee, so it would be a total of $25 for them to upload the report, and that $10 would come back to the town as far as administration costs for reviewing the records and handling the records. So the fire marshal's office would see a revenue income on the record, or on the fire alarm, fire and life safety system testing throughout the town of Webster. And, in order, and they do all the legwork getting everything started. They will notify contractors within um, a certain radius of the town of Webster and let them know that the reports have to be uploaded. They'll hold town hall seminars and uh, webinars on how to utilize that service so that way all the contractors are aware of how to upload and how everything works. Looking at the agreement, uh, Andrew, this is, uh, we are the client, or is the client the individual who is uh, getting the inspection? We are the client as far as... So there was two that I had provided to the town for right, the... Right, one, one with revenue share and one without. Yep. Yeah. So... The one without, we could say with that one, that the fees, the client shall not pay any fees for the solution, which is the uh, third-party cloud service. Um, and then if you get into the revenue share, then that's where everything is collected by the compliance engine. They take the, like a 7% for the credit card processing, and then everything else comes back to the town. And it also, like, a benefit of this as well is it drives compliance because there's some, some businesses in some places in the town of Webster that they aren't getting things inspected as frequently as they should be. Um, commercial businesses, we do inspections on them once every three years. 
So there's two years that we won't be in that business to make sure that they've had their sprinkler system done, per se. And then when we go, we say, well, you got to have it inspected. If there was ever a deficiency or something happened at that business where a sprinkler had prematurely let go because it was fatigued because they hadn't been inspected in 30 years, you know, there's it helps the business because it prevents nuisance alarms or nuisance issues happening with fire and life safety systems. Is that uh, a tri, uh, called triannual inspection that we conduct? Is that by uh, code or that's by, by law? Co that's by, well, it's the Title 19 okay. of the New York compilation of rules and regulations. So it's by law that we have to inspect that every three years. Are businesses aware that they're, that they're responsible for an inspection annually? So businesses are aware that they have to, uh, we'll take a restaurant, for example, with an Ansel system for the kitchen hood. They are aware that they have to have it inspected every six months. And some do, some don't. So when I go in there every year and I see that it hasn't been done every six months, then I say it has to be done every six months. And it's a, it's a constant game. But when you, if we were to utilize this compliance engine, they're sending the reminders 30 days out, and they say you have to have your hood system inspected to be in accordance with the fire code, then things are getting done, less chance of issues happening. And will all contractors be signed on with this? By passing the resolution, it would say that all inspections done in the town of Webster Got it. would have to have the reports uploaded to the compliance engine. Okay. All right starting to make sense to me now. And, and thank you for sending all of this in advance of the meeting. I I was somewhat confused as I was reading through it as to who the contractor was, but now I, now I get it. So ultimately the the businesses will the businesses that have testing done more frequently will end up end up paying for the service of having the those inspections done because the contractors will pass that cost back down to the of business. Course. So Andrew, I kind of the genre of the only stupid question is the one not asked. Uh, I have two that I hope don't end up being considered stupid. Uh, one is that, it's just from my edification, these are inspections that would usually be done by the fire marshal. These are actually inspections that would have been Correct. done by... These are inspections that are done by certified personnel for the type of system that they are. And it's usually based on an NFPA requirement that they are inspected at a certain frequency. Okay. And that, that was the one thing I couldn't glean from reading this. I, did, I didn't think that you and or Jamie were somewhat divesting yourself of certain inspections that the fire marshal's department does at Webster it, within this scope. It, these are ones that would be done by outside contractors. Right, and it's um, streamlining it for us so that way when we go we're not constantly asking for the records and everything. Yeah. That we can view them prior to going and doing a fire and safety inspection and we are aware that they've had their system or they're um, inspected. Yeah, and the second, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, is that uh, <laughs> Not that I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, because when you hear it doesn't cost anything to the town, that on the surface is very good. But if anybody's familiar with the service from um, freeconferencecalling.com, <clears throat> you don't pay anything for that, but you get a number. Have you ever been on one of those numbers and had the, the call just not be very good and it's not reliable? Mm -hmm. I don't complain about that, Patty. You getting what you paid for? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, not to be a wise guy, but I mean, if, if we're, and I don't know if this is the difference between revenue sharing and not revenue sharing, but if we're in, if, uh, this is not a contract, we're signing is what I'm understanding, this is more with the suit. So, you know. What we would be doing is once we would pass a resolution, we would be entering into an agreement with Bricer for the compliance engine. And I have spoken to multiple different depart fire departments and municipalities that have adopted this and they have nothing bad to say about it. I've even asked like the worst questions and nothing has come back negative. It's actually driven compliance in towns and it's made their jobs easier.
for doing inspections. Interesting. Sarah, the city of Syracuse was recent. They had adopted it. Would you briefly explain the um, the revenue sharing again? If we, if we decide to go that route. So currently, the contractor to upload a report pays $15 for an upload of a report. If there's a deficiency listed on that report, and then they go and do a correction for that deficiency and have to upload the amended report, there's no upload fee for the, uh, the repair upload, basically. Mm -hmm. So they pay the $15, the $15 is what covers the cost of the compliance engine to do business. And if we- by the con I'm sorry, by the contractor, you mean the person who's, whose system is being inspected or, con or looked at? The, the person who's doing the inspection. Yeah. So, so say we, as just an example, we have, um, who's the alarm system that we have? So Sonatrol. So if Sonatrol comes in and they're supposed to be doing an annual inspection of the fire alarm system here at the town, Sonatrol would be paying the $15 to upload the report to the compliance engine. So they sort of inspect the inspectors. The compliance engine will, and they review all the documents. If they find deficiencies listed on there, then they'll contact the town of Webster and say, we noticed that there was deficiencies. Have mm -hmm. you had them corrected yet? So then the inspector would make the repair, upload the report stating that everything is functional and working. They're not going to pay another $15 to upload the repair report, basically. So we're requiring the inspectors to pay the, the, the money? Yes. The $15? Yes. Okay, I'm still confused as to where, where's the sharing? Where so the revenue share, the $15 is for the compliance engine. Mm -hmm. The revenue share um, going would be added to the fee schedule for the fire prevention block uh, for next week. So I've added an item on there for fire and life safety system maintenance administrative fee. So that $10 would go on top of the 15 so it would be a $25 upload fee. And then we get $10 minus a handling charge because their credit card uh, charges usually. So we would get the remainder of the $10 back to the town quarterly. So are we, we're performing a service as well. We're reviewing all the documents that get uploaded to the compliance engine, and that's the $10 fee. You sort of know where I'm going with this. I mean, with the town, mm -hmm. we can't just take money. I mean, it's Correct. almost the, like a, yeah, I, okay. The, char the, charge of, like, but the charge of the $10 fee. We have to provide a service. If we're, when we, we're entitled to a reasonable payment for a service if we provide a service. Yes. So okay. we would be reviewing all those electronic records that get uploaded to the compliance engine. I, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume the contractor is passing on that cost within their fee that they charge to the restaurant or the commercial building. But I, you know, I don't know what scope of inspections this covers. I think you yeah, actually, but typical inspection of a grill or whatever is a hundred bucks. So if you have, we'll say a. Um, one of the inspections I want to have on there is the hood cleaning, like the, because sometimes those aren't getting done as frequently as they should be, but with the hood cleaning, that's upwards of over $700. And how often is that done? That should be every six months in a frequently used hood, uh, commercial cooking, kitchen, commercial probably. kitchen, any restaurant or bar that's open daily. It should be done every six months. Okay, that's the cost of the cleaning. That's the cost of the cleaning. Not the inspection. The cleaning and inspection at the same time. So they would pay um, the steam cleaning company to come in and do the cleaning and inspection. That's $700. Or more or less, depending on what contractor you go with. That was just based on one receipt that I saw from a company that had it done recently. And that's how frequently? 
every six, it doesn't have to be cleaned every six months. It has to be inspected every six months. But it has to be cleaned every six months. So no. It's, no, it's, it's not, it has to be cleaned if the grease accumulation is above a certain yeah, okay. thickness. If it does okay. pass inspection. Correct. Okay. But the contractor doing the cleaning is also the one doing the inspection? Yes, yeah, so usually if wow. they... Wow. <laughs> yep, needs to be done. Yep, needs to be done. But the, not all the time, but like with the Ansel systems, those are done because you have fusible links up behind the the filters for the hood system, and over time with the heat and exposure, they weaken, and if they're not inspected and changed out frequently enough, they can fail, and the restaurant can shut down for a couple of days due to an Ansel system um, going off when it shouldn't. You know, as much as I like to see revenue, we all like to see revenue, um, I'm not real anxious to pass on an additional $10 so that the town can get a portion of this revenue. I just, I don't think that's a really great way for us to be doing business in the town. No, I, and, I, and to Charlie's point, you know, you get into the, <laughs> is collecting that money, are we doing the service? But I, I also want to just make sure that, um, the shop owner, whatever that, whether it's restaurant or whatever, they're not now pigeonholed into using a contractor that is with Bricer. Is no, that correct? There is no affiliation between contractors and Bricer. Okay. It is only that it is all going to one place. And right. That is the only thing. And that's important because obviously. Uh, I just want to make sure that if we ever did this resolution, this this is certainly, uh, we, we, you know, I, I can see the benefit. It doesn't cost the town taxpayers anything. It gives our fire marshals a database to check on these things. It's also reducing um, the amount of times that fire departments will go to an establishment because they don't have their fire alarm system yeah. tested annually and they get a lot of nuisance or it's a detector goes off randomly and calls the fire department out at three o'clock in the morning which happens frequently enough and it'll it'll reduce nuisance alarms for have, fire departments as well i have another question it's a hypothetically hypothetical so um a business whatever it might be does not have the inspection done on a timely manner and they get uh, they get a reminder and they don't have it done then they'll get uh, another reminder that it wasn't done, or they get a deficiency report of some sort? I will be notified, uh, myself or Jamie will be notified that they are deficient in, if, if they were due for an annual, and then it, whatever we set it to be 30 days, 60 days, if they're 60 days outside of their annual or six month, and they still haven't had a report uploaded to the compliance engine, then myself or Jamie will get an email stating that this restaurant here did not have their uh, system inspected, and then that would drive us to go out there to enforce. But but you wouldn't be doing that inspection. I mean, if it was done last year, let's say your three-year inspection was done last year. Right. And they don't do their annual this year. Um, you go you go out again for enforcement, even though it's the three years is enough. The three years is a minimum. I see. So places of assembly are one year. Multifamily dwellings, a lot of the big multifamily dwellings that we have here, are every two years, and then commercial. Every other commercial business or small business could be an office in a converted house, or it can be something as much as Xerox or. Those are every three years. Um, because we're running out of time to stay on schedule, I'm gonna, and we're not, obviously this is a discussion so that in the next couple of board meetings if we decide to do a Correct. resolution, I think, <laughs> what, I th what I think I feel on this is threefold. If the business owner is not beholden to using the contractors that are tied into Bryson or Bricer, because obviously 
Those contractors are going to pass that $15 on in some form or fashion to the consumer, which is the business holder. So as long as the business owner is not beholden to using a contractor that reports into to Bryce or whatever it's called. Well, no, they are. It, no, because the resolution that we would pass would be that all reports done within the town of Webster would be uploaded to the compliance engine. So any business can use any contractor they want, but that contractor that they use would have to upload the report to the compliance engine. Right. So our resolution states that all of that mm. has to go into this data collecting. Correct. Is this what the other towns and municipalities you contacted have done with Bricer? Yes. Some have just chosen to do the no fee, no additional fee or revenue share, and then some have chosen to do a revenue share. Okay, so on my, my not be holding thing, a business goes out and gets ABC and, and inspectors, who is not at all privy to this resolution we did. And so we don't know that they're in Bricer and it, you get pinged, you and Jamie, and so you go out there and say, hey man, you haven't done this. I said, no, we did. We went through ABC a month ago. So then you got to contact ABC or and we say, hey, we have a resolution here at the law that you got to upload it and you got to pay 15 bucks to upload it there. Is that how that would work? That they would, yes, if the contractor did not know that the record had to be uploaded to the compliance engine, then they would be notified that that's how. Okay. And, and that, if that's the way it would work, that fits into my first premise of the business owner is not beholden to using a contractor that's already in Bricer. Actually, if they went out and used a contractor, as long as they're an accredited contractor for whatever the inspection, whatever is, they probably didn't, they paid $15 less, and I can't imagine the contractor would go back and rebuild them. Good by me. Second one is, it's zero cost to the taxpayers. That's good. And the third one is I would love to know within the contract, can the town of Webster, the fire marshal, somewhat download out of the cloud these records periodically so you have them on our server or whatever because I'm going to go back to the, the freeconferencecall.com. <clears throat> if this becomes really a useful tool for you and Jamie and the town's fire marshals and suddenly it goes away. Those. We don't pay anything to them. We don't really have a dog in the fight to argue with them. What, what do you mean it went away? So I'd like to know that we can pull that information out of the cloud so, so at least those. when it goes away we yeah. have a point in time. We so we have ownership in other words. So Yeah. And they might say, well no, we're not going to give you that because you're paying zero. Well, you so know, those that's records, a consideration of the person. He's answering your question. Mm -hmm. So those records that are getting uploaded are not a requirement for us to have on file. I've started keeping them on file, but it's a record that the business has to have on file for our inspection purposes when we go to inspect annually, biannual, triannually, that they have those records maintained. So when they get uploaded, the customer, the business owner, will ultimately get a copy, but a copy does get uploaded to the compliance engine. So we don't need to, say, download anything to our servers. And there is a part of the agreement that says that Bricer will maintain the records for a minimum of X amount of years if we ever choose to end the agreement with them or if they end it with us. So, so we are not required to keep those records, but I imagine you have some sort of Excel spreadsheet or whatever it might be where you look at what inspections are due and when they've been done, and you might add a column that says deficiency noted on such and such a date. And that's really all we're required to keep. We're not even required to keep that, but it would, it would help you. You don't need the actual record that's on their cloud. Correct, because currently I get reports sporadically from different inspection companies and then I review them and make sure that there are no deficiencies and if there are deficiencies then I follow up with the business. Are those contractors required to send you these deficiency reports? Currently there is nothing in the current fire code there was in the 2010 fire code which stated that 
that was the case. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to be peppering you with all That's these fine. questions. This is just so, I think, new to all of us. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, there's a lot that we need to understand about it. And thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. It sounds good. It is, you know. I have a question. Andrew, do you have a, like, I was leading to an inventory? of where the ansels are, who has what fire suppression, stuff like that, so there's a way to checks and balance it? So through IPS, which is a software system we currently use, we mark whether um, they have a type 1 hood, an ansel system, sprinkler system, fire alarm system, it is documented in IPS. And if we were to enter into an agreement with Bricer, we share that information out of IPS, which gives them a head start and they do all the legwork for contacting and finding companies that we may not have known about or that may have recently gotten an alarm system, but they go through and canvas the companies and find all the information and provide that to us. So it's, I think it's a benefit for us because they're doing the legwork that to see who has what and when it was last inspected and who the owners of the property are, they reach out as well, so. And who's gonna let the contractors know that so, we passed this resolution? So what Bricer does is they draft a letter to and send to all the companies which deal with fire and life safety systems Got it. in a certain radius of Webster and mail it out to them and say this is what the town of Webster has passed, this is what we're going to be doing, we're going to hold a town hall seminar, If this is the link to view how Bricer works, the compliance engine works, how the upload works, yep. and they work with all the contractors and they expect that in the first year you're going to have 20 to 30 percent, mm -hmm. and then the second year, you know, 30 to 60, and then roughly 80 by the third year. And it's, it just takes a little bit of time. That's why they do it in the three-year agreement that continually renews unless we choose to back out. Have you heard of any of the um, any of the contractors uh, that are unable to comply with Bricer or work with Bricer? I have not looked into that yet. I have talked to a couple different contractors when I've been out doing inspections, and I'll meet up with like an Ansel system inspection, and I asked the owner, I said, hey, what do you think about this? And he says, this sounds like a good idea, and I would just have to build it into my cost. So they didn't see that $15 as a burden. Well, I wasn't thinking so much of the cost, Andrew. I was thinking more of in terms of, um, like, programming and, and you know, uh, being compatible with uploading the information. Have you heard of anybody, any of these, uh, any of the uh, inspection companies having a problem with uh, getting their information to Bricer and, and, and working with this uh, uh, compliance engine? I have not, and that is some. That is a question that I can talk to Bricer because they would have, because they work closely with the contractors to build at least a template mm -hmm. for the upload of the report. So if we, set, if we sign a contract with these folks, they're going to have a, a sounder here and invite all of the contractors. You know? So it would be a virtual. Okay, it would so they're going a virtual. Yes. It's going to go out to all of the, the um, contractors in the area that do all the inspections. Yes. In all these places, and then those people will then know about it. And once they do an inspection, they will send their information to Bryce. Correct. So Bryce will then have it on file and we'll be able to notify the places. Bryce will, will also have a database of all the places in Webster that get inspected. Yes, and they also will send mailings 30 to 60 days out. So then they will send notifications to all those places that you're due for an inspection and follow up. Yes. I got it. I, it's <laughs> and if we need to, I can set up something with Bryce or with the town board where they can do a Zoom 
uh, webinar as well if they need any more information. So this process what, what is what will help you to make sure there's nobody slipping through the holes? Correct. Slipping that, through the, the cracks. And that there's compliance within. There's compliance. And because they'll be getting notifications, then there should not be uh, any situations where they're out of compliance and or having to come at 3 o'clock in the morning because they have a faulty smoke detector in yep. one of their hoods and that should prevent a lot of that. Yes. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I, 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 there, there are these kind of businesses and services that it, it, it is it's a win for the town. It's a win, really, for everybody around. And then, then they're making money. I, I'm not here to, you know, Bricer, it must work for them. Um, it's great. I, I, I like it. It certainly, if it works the way it's described, it's a win. Um, I would say, and Charlie, you know, uh, what I've learned in contract law is that if I... If I don't pay a dollar to you, but I don't really have a claim against you if you renege then the contract. Well, you tell you that's consideration. It's called consideration, yes. In the town, as long as we understand, we are not in a position where we paid any consideration. That where they say they'll keep the records for three years. This is a win for us, but if we if we use this tool to become more efficient and we you know really become dependent on it. That's why I asked the question. I'd like to know if we can pull down the data so at least, you know, it's like backing up your iPhone to the cloud. So if the iPhone dies, you at least can go pull it out of the cloud. That if we become dependent on this and they do all of a sudden have a glitch or go out of business and this and that, and all of our records were basically the last three or four years on this were accessed by the cloud and we don't have any at our disposal, we don't have a claim against them. So the thing is, is with the business getting the copy, with the business getting the copy and it being uploaded to the compliance engine, is that even if they were to fall or if they were to go away, the business still has the copy of the record, and we would just go back to when we go for a fire and safety inspection, we would ask them, do you have the copy of your last three sprinkler inspections? Well, it does say in the contract, uh, I'm just looking at it, if you look under, well, there's two number twos, but this is under, this is the second number two, under Bricer Responsibilities, they have backup. It says they'll back up the database upon request by client. Uh, well, it's a client. They, they will make available to the client, well, we're the client, a complete and secure that is encrypted and approximately authenticated download file of client data. So... If we request it, they'll give it to us according to this contract. I guess maybe they didn't. I don't want to make a moan out of a model. I would just no, but that's, say that. that's an important thing. I think. You know, yeah. and, and I would imagine I, if they have a problem with us, you know, I hope we don't. You just want to have periodically. I know what you're saying. Uh, if we don't have that, we just go out to the business and we can recreate it, ask them to pull their record. Well, that's inefficient. We're doing this to be efficient so you and Jamie can go and look. Knowledge is power. There it all is. Correct. If it goes away because we've become totally dependent on it being there in the cloud, that would be a problem for us. Yeah, we could I'm just saying the we business is one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just yeah. saying that we would go back to the way we're doing it right now. Yeah. Which, oh, no, I... For streamlining it and making it as a tool and making it more time efficient, that's why this is there. But there's no other. I, I'm going to guess based on what you just. We'll be able to figure out if we get to this resolution. It, it also, number four, it says it says the client owns the data. Provide. Okay. There you go. So within that ownership means that during our relationship with them. We get with Steve Peace and whatever and figure out how to somehow periodically back up our iPhone, so to speak. Okay. So if it goes away. And I don't mean to be a buzzkill and whatever, but... We'll, we'll look at this again, yeah. but I think there's 
I think a lot of these questions are probably answered in the contract. Yeah. Realize too, you're changing behavior. If if even if they went it's a three year contract and they, they get in the habit of knowing that it's the law and it's a six month requirement, you're going to start to instill a new behavior, which yeah. will help his job. They should be doing that now. Exactly, but this might be a friendly reminder. We have restaurants and bars left to do this stuff <laughs> when we come out of this. So, so next next step yeah. is that our, our attorney will take a look at the contract yeah. and uh, we'll move this forward at one of our meetings. Yeah, I would think that based on your timeline of getting this going, I mean, if we, we tighten it up in resolution and, you know, we got four more formal board meetings before January 1st. My, my you count the organization expectation meetings. was to have this after the first of the year. Okay. I, I, to have it in place by the first of the year. 